Works 96.7 WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning back into Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We do Cop Talk the last Tuesday of each month. AJ Brammer in here in studio with Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace. Once again, uh, Sheriff, thanks for coming on the show. It's always my pleasure, AJ. Thank you. I, went, uh, you know, I was always warned when I was younger that the uh, time would go by quicker as you got older. And boy, were they ever right. It, uh, we start the new year, we're midway through, and then we're at the end. It's, uh, it's hard to believe, but, uh, but it's been a good year. Well, that's like, so you say it's been a good year, that's what we like to hear? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, the law enforcement, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, got a lot accomplished, uh, you know, some of our goals that, uh, that we set out to do, which is, uh, you know, number one, uh, the narcotics that we have in our community, combating that. Um, you know, I feel like we've made a lot of headway with, uh, with the number of arrests. Also, feel like we made some headway with some uh, some programs that we have started, uh, especially at the uh, Jefferson County Jail, to to combat it from the other end as well. I've always stated that we really can't arrest our way out of this problem. Although uh, Jefferson County, per capita, did lead the state of Indiana in arrest, uh, narcotics arrest. Uh, so that says a lot for the effort our law enforcement is putting in. But uh, but we got to combat it from many different uh, angles, and uh, and I think we're doing that. And, uh, so I feel good about you know where we started at the beginning of the year to where we're at now, and uh, we just got to continue to to build upon that. All right, and you know that's a problem that doesn't have an easy answer. But like you said, there's a lot of different there's a lot of different balls in play when it comes to how the county's going about addressing the drug problem. Yes, there is. Uh, like I said, we have some uh, some programs at the jail to to combat the addiction, and then uh, you know if you recently we've started some uh, GED programs to. Uh, you know, try to get the inmates to uh, to get their uh, high school diploma if they don't have that. And then uh, the first year we're venturing out into uh, some college programs to where uh, they do have their GED and they are interested in, in furthering their career or furthering their, I should say career, <laughs> we don't further their career, but further, you know, their education, uh, you know, in maybe the welding trade or whatever it may be, um, you know, they can do that as well, but I have an opportunity. So uh, so we hope uh, hitting on, on several different fronts, the educational front and uh, the treatment front, and then of course the arrest will, uh, will help them back. But, uh, so we've made progress, and uh, you know we're trying to stem that tide, but we've got to got to keep moving forward. It's one of those that you you can't back off for a second. If you do, then uh, then it takes back over, as we're seeing in neighboring counties. And like you said, um, the county led the state in drug arrest per capita, so obviously it's a problem that yes we. we we know it's a serious problem, but we know that there's um right there's a lot going right. On. Yeah, Jefferson County is no different. Uh, you're not. I guess that can be, you know, very concerning and should be to a certain extent. Uh, but uh, you know, I think it says a lot again for law enforcement and the effort they put forward because it's uh, it goes across county lines. It just doesn't, you know, stop at our county line or, or the adjacent counties. It's uh, it's uh, a nationwide epidemic and issue. So, um, like I said, I feel good about the efforts we put forward, but we still got a lot of work left to do. Right, and obviously, you know, drugs aren't drugs aren't the only problem you face in the county. But like you said, it's been a um, been a busy year in a lot of different ways for the county. Well, it's not the only problem we face. You're right, but it uh, it drives probably 90% of the rest of the issues, uh, right. such as the thefts and the home burglaries and, and those type of things that we have. I mean, we find, you know, generally every time we make an arrest involving a home invasion or a, a theft of an auto or whatever it may be, um, it's usually narcotic related or narcotic driven. So uh, you know, it drives the majority of our crime. So if we can we can keep that in check and stomp that out, then uh, then we can take care of a lot of these other issues. And we found that with our statistics. Uh, as our drug arrests go up, uh, you know, we find our other uh, incidents such as theft and, uh, and uh, home invasions and those type of things going down. So they work hand in hand. And so, you know, what do you think the Sheriff's Office will take from what you guys have done in 2015 as you head forward into 2016? How do you apply that? Yeah, good question. Uh, you know, that's what we want to expand upon our, uh, you know, our narcotics investigations, uh, you know, even become more active. In that area, uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with the with building intelligence. So, uh, you know, we're getting a lot better you know, of sharing our intelligence with with each other. Sometimes, uh, police officers in the past can be a little territorial. So, uh, but we've been able to knock that down here locally, and uh, and that's uh, paid big dividends. So, we need to continue to work on you know sharing that information, and uh, continue to build on our other programs that uh, that we have started. I think uh, with that combination, that uh, you know that it breeds success. We're not going to you know, we're not going to save everyone. You know, be unrealistic to think that, but uh, but we really believe that we can we can make some serious headway with uh, with the way we're going now. I know you had uh, you had mentioned a second ago. You know, in terms of sharing information, it was a uh, a saying that we came up with on the program this year that you were a big fan of. Whether brown or blue, they're working for you. That's right. Absolutely. It's a it's all one team effort, and uh, you know, 
we kind of work together as one. That's what, the, uh, that's what we're paid to do, that's what I'm elected to do, and that's what the citizens expect of us. So, uh, and that's the bottom line, we work for the uh, citizens of Jefferson County. So we, we have to put forth all the effort and, uh, and continue to work together. And another issue that we've seen a lot, quite a bit of this past year, it seems, I know that you just put out a notice on it, I believe yesterday on Facebook, was um, and we've seen a lot of scams hitting not uh, nationwide, but in particular, we've seen quite a few in the area this past year. Yeah, we are inundated. It seems like it goes in, in spurts. Um, you know, recently we've had several uh, scams. The IRS scam has been going around for uh, for quite some time, but it's kind of reared its ugly head again here locally. Uh, you'll get a call, you know, saying you're from the IRS and you owe X amount of dollars. If you don't pay that, then uh, they're coming to your house to arrest you. And I can assure you that's not going to be the case whatsoever. So, right. so please, uh, you know, if you get that call, um, you know, hang up. You know, don't don't acknowledge them and hang up, and then move on to someone else. But uh, that is certainly a scam. The IRS does not operate that way. They're not going to call you up and, and make those type of threats. And, and some of these threats have even, you know, gone overboard you know, with the vulgarity and those type of things. So, I actually went out to a few of the residents in the county to sit down at the kitchen table with some of these folks and uh, calm them back down because, uh, uh, you know. They prey on the on, on people, so you gotta you gotta be aware that these are scams, and that, and uh, like I said, don't engage them. Just hang up on them, and, and they'll move on to somebody else. Uh, during the holiday season, we had uh, some issues with what we call porch piracy, where right. uh, delivery trucks would uh, would leave your packages on your porch, and people would follow them through the neighborhood and, uh, and steal the packages before you got home. Our suggestion was to maybe have it delivered if you can to work, or you know another reliable source uh, that can keep an eye on that. You know, although that was prevalent during the holiday season that can that can go on and does go on throughout the year so you know, just keep in mind if you're going to be away from the house and you're expecting the package have it delivered to the neighbor if they're home or to your work or to somebody you can rely on to take care of that because that was a was a significant issue that we had during the, during the holiday season and uh, thir thirdly there was a uh, recently it's called the uh, secret shopper scam where uh, you'll uh, maybe get a call or actually get a check in the mail for a significant amount of money, and they'll tell you to go spend X amount of dollars, and then and then mail the rest back to the organization. So, be aware of that. That's something that's uh, that's came up in the last couple of days. Uh, you know, fortunately, the banks uh, you know hung onto the check and, and didn't cash it, and uh, nobody was out of anybody. But, uh, but be aware that uh, these are all scams. If you didn't if you didn't put your name in to win something, or even if you did, you know, always verify you know several different sources before you move forward because. Uh, uh, there's so many scams out there. We certainly don't want to see you lose your life savings, which some uh, people unfortunately have over some reason. I know with the IRS scam, you know, like you said, the IRS never operates that way. They never make phone calls. They they do. They contact you by mail first, and then with the other scams, I know most of the credit card scams, it's as simple as you know, you hang up and call, just hang up and call your customer service number. That's the easiest way to verify something yeah. like that. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, verify. You know, with a phone call or. Or verify through the or your local law enforcement agency. We'll uh, we'll check it out or direct you who to who call and, uh, and check it out as well. So yeah, it was verified for you, especially before you send any money off. And never ever ever give out personal information over the phone. I mean, a lot of times that's what they're seeking as well. Maybe a social security number, a uh, checking account number, a bank card number, or something along those lines. So you never want to give out any personal information over the phone. I think that with a lot of the, especially with the credit card companies, you know, we know. They know what the score is. They know that these scams are going on. People are trying to prey on people. So, I don't think if, if there is an issue and they do call you, they will mind it if you call if you hang up on them and call back to verify. They Absolutely, just, they understand what's going on. Yeah, they certainly do. And actually, they they do a pretty good job of uh, keeping track of uh, of your credit card. You know, they know where you're at and your uh, credit card is being used uh, you know, several states away. They're going to uh, verify if there's you know if there's several charges on there. So they generally do a pretty good job of that. But uh, it's always good to uh, keep track of your, your bank statements and your credit card records and, uh, and make sure there's nothing that shows up on there that shouldn't be. Jefferson County Sheriff John Wall is joining us for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. Anderson Sales and Services is located at 2914 50 Drive up on the Madison Hilltop. <laughs> we'll be back in just a second with Sheriff Wallace on Cop Talk on Works 967. Okay. And I know we just, uh, we're still in the, we're still in the middle of the 12 days of Christmas, but we just wrapped up you know the the main holiday season with you know, the Christmas holiday things like that, and um, you guys had some efforts in place to uh, you know help spread some holiday cheer. We did uh, actually. It's it's one of the uh, nicest times of the year for, for local law enforcement. Uh, several years ago, and I think Jonathan Simpson with the city of police really steered ahead of this is a shop with a cop program, 
at the city camp. We started several years ago. Each year it's grown. Um, I think last year we uh, was able to assist maybe 30, 35 uh, kids, local use, and uh, this year we were able to serve 50. So we're, we're very pleased with the efforts that, the, that law enforcement puts out to, to raise us money. It's throughout the year. We do uh, various different fundraisers. And, uh, and we have some very generous folks in the community just uh, out of the blue will give us uh, give us donations for the shop of the cops. So very fortunate in that aspect. And it, the way negativity is you know, shined upon law enforcement right now nationwide, uh, unfortunately we don't see that here locally, but, uh, but we want to keep it that way. So <clears throat> this shop of the cop program certainly helps us do that. Uh, Again, we get to take the children out for a pizza party over at the uh, junior high and then give them a uh, big police escort to the uh, Walmart and, and then we get to spend time with them in Walmart and their family members shopping and, and uh, just, you know, like I said, shed in a positive light on law enforcement. So it's a good program all the way around and, uh, and I'm very appreciative of the efforts of, of all the law enforcement puts into it and, and appreciative of the efforts of about being able to assist us with their uh, with their kind donations. I know uh, part of the program that goes into the shop of the cop is uh, a fun one for you guys. No shave November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys enjoy that. Of course, uh, you know, we have to be clean shaven throughout the year, so we do the no shave November. Uh, that does raise money for shop of the cop, but it also uh, raises money for cancer awareness. Um, you know, so the guys really uh, really get into that and participate and, and raise money for several good causes. One uh, being the uh, you know cancer. Uh, awareness programs and, and secondly the shop of the cops so um, uh, the city even carries I think it over to December where they can uh, keep their facial hair going and uh, give an additional donation so usually by the end of November I'm pretty much tired of looking at the guys with the, with the fur on their face including myself so uh, we go ahead and end it then but uh, it's, uh, it's a good program and it's, it's worked out well for, for us and for the community. And you know like you said it's an opportunity to raise awareness for some good causes but also, um, like you said, an opportunity for you guys to kind of get into the community a little more and uh, just for people to see, see yeah. officers in a, in a non-arresting light. Right, a good point. Yeah, we unfortunately don't get, get to do that very often. Mostly it's uh, over there because of a, a serious or a crisis type situation where you know this is a positive situation. So uh, we get to spend an entire evening hoping, hopefully shaping the uh, the mindset of these young men and women as they as they grow older that they the you know the police are here for us and it's not always a negative thing but it can be a positive thing. And as we you know we wrap up one holiday uh, with Christmas that concluded this past weekend but we are still uh, still have another pretty big holiday coming up in here in a few days a, a big day for people to head out with New Year's Eve. Yeah, we do. Yeah, and generally if you know we we'll knock on wood here uh, our last uh, several New Year's Eves have uh, it went off well. Uh, not a whole lot of issues. Uh, people are very conscientious about the you know, designated driver. You know, they're going to go out and partake in any, any kind of beverages, and, uh, and we certainly encourage that. And uh, you know, we want everybody to go out and enjoy themselves, have a good time, ring in 2016. But uh, but most importantly, we want you to get home safe. And uh, you know, they can, they can take one uh, issue of uh, using bad judgment to. Uh, to end up in, the, in a county jail or even worse, and we don't uh, we don't want that to happen. So so please designate that driver and, uh, and uh, have a good time. It's definitely you know we we can't say it enough. Just you know make make good choices out there. I mean, you you know it's it's okay. To, like you said before, it, it's okay to partake. Yeah, know, it is. Activities. Yeah, be just, safe about it. Yeah, just use good judgment, and uh, we're going to be out there in full force. Uh, you know, city, state, county, Hanover. We're going to be out in, in force. Uh, you know, with our law enforcement patrols to keep our roads safe. So uh, you know, there's a going to be a zero tolerance. So if you, uh, if you make that mistake and uh, you end up uh, down in the facility, uh, you know, you know, the person you have to blame is yourself. Uh, you know, there's, there's no reason to uh, to get behind the wheel after you've been drinking. For sure. So play it safe and then get everybody home safe. As the sheriff said, definitely play it safe, don't drink and drive. We don't want to see anything, anything bad happen out there in our community. Uh, you mentioned knock on wood a little bit ago, Sheriff, and I feel like uh, kind of a knock on wood situation. Normally around this time of year, we would be talking about, you know, we'd be warning people to be aware of weather conditions, but I feel like today, you know, we're kind of more concerned about, um, we're not used to talking about flooding conditions around this time of year, we're more used to talking about, you know, icy conditions this time of year, so. Yeah, it's going to happen, though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I noticed this first time that I walked in to see you with your, uh, your Ball State uh, Pluckhead jacket on there. That's yeah. uh, I knew that uh, it was a little chillier outside. We're generally not even used to seeing people with jackets on right now, are we? But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been an unusually warm uh, early winter months. But, uh, but as we all know, that lived here in the Ohio Valley, it's going to change, and uh, we're going to we're going to get our share of uh, winter weather. 
and, and what we do, you know, we got to be prepared. And, uh, like I said, generally we do a very good job around here of that. We've got some great road crews that keep our keep our roads safe, but uh, but always be prepared. And this is the time to do it before it happens. Uh, you know, put those necessary necessities in your vehicle that you may need. Uh, you know, should the event you get stranded for any period of time, it's just uh, it's kind of plan ahead for that as well. But uh, like I said, it's going to happen sooner or later. Around here, maybe March or April, who knows? But uh, but it's going to happen. Definitely. Yeah. Be cautious and be aware of your surroundings as you hit the roadways. Jefferson County Sheriff John Wall is joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We do Cop Talk the last Tuesday of each month. We'll be back to wrap up this month and this year's edition of Cop Talk after this with Sheriff Wallace on Works 96.7. Well, for the community, we also appreciate you coming on the show. You know, we appreciate those kind words, and, and uh, I'd like to say I appreciate the uh, the community's uh, response to us. Uh, over the last several months, again, we uh, alluded to earlier the negativity that law enforcement is uh, is facing, uh, you know, nationwide um, and locally here. You know, we often get calls or, or care packages or whatever it may be delivered to the uh, to the sheriff's office or the police station from our citizens, just letting us know how much they appreciate us, and, uh, and that really does mean a lot to us. And, and we very much appreciate that because uh, we certainly need their support uh, to, uh, to keep doing what we're doing. So as a whole, uh, 2015, here we are at the end of 2015, so it was a good year for you? It was a good year. Looking forward to 2016. Uh, we're actually going to add a, an additional officer to the uh, to the Sheriff's Department, which uh, which is much appreciated. The County Council has, has helped us out with that. Uh, we have two new officers that will be starting uh, in mid-January. It'll be uh, Charles Miller and uh, Brian Muldoon, a couple of uh, local guys here that will be joining us. Uh, at the sheriff's office, uh, we we certainly welcome them, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly welcome their help as well. It's uh, be a little thin out there sometimes, so uh, so we're looking forward to getting these guys up and running. And I really uh, think the community is going to be very pleased with the with the choice of these two young men, and uh, you know, they're going to serve us very well. I think mean, you know, just as we as we wrap up the show here, you know, one more time, like I said, can't say it enough. Uh, New Year's Eve coming up, have a good time, but have a safe good time. Absolutely, just uh, like I said. Think before you drink and drive, and then have that designated driver. Just, just please be safe, and uh, let's uh, ring in 2016 the right way. All right, Jefferson County Sheriff John Wall is joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. Sheriff, you'll be back next year. God willing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my Green, my Green Bay Packers. I don't know. They, may, they might not make it next year, but uh, but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Anyway. Excellent. Uh, Sheriff, anything else you'd like to add before we go? Hey, I'll just uh, a little sympathy out to the Bengal fans. Uh, they, had a, they had a long night last night, so uh, <laughs> kind of uh, some sleepy eyes out there this morning. But uh, you gotta love the NFL action. It's, it's, it's a good time. But, no, again, uh, looking forward to the new year. Like I said, just uh, just please uh, please bring it in safe. All right, Sheriff, you have a good one. You too, sir. Jefferson County Sheriff John Walls joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services, and that is going to do it for Cop Talk here in 2015. We hope you join us once again for Cop Talk when we bring it back in January of 2016, the last Tuesday of the month. And until that time, be sure to stay tuned to Works 96.7 WORX. I'm AJ Bramber. Thanks for tuning in. Back to the music on WORX.